What is good guys, so today I'm gonna be doing uh, something a little bit different. Uh, we got SPL week 5 matchups, they went up like last night. And yeah, I'm gonna do some predictions here with my man Dennis the Menace. And <laughs> so the first match is uh, Sidumas versus Io, this is the uh, Alpha Runners versus the Everground Bigs. And pretty much um, Sidumas score at the moment is 3 and 1 and Io is 3 and 0, oh. I think he was benched one week. And Io is... Um, I think um, he played pretty well so far. He um, can change. Like I think it's like hard to prep for you because last year in World Cup he used um, a lot of stall, semi stall type of builds. Now he uses more bulky offense, right? And like I think it's gonna be hard for Sidemas to prep for bulky offense balance and to also prep for potential stall so i'm gonna um give this game to you uh, he's also three and oh and sidumas is three and one and sidumas being three and one um he um beat abr in week one and he had some hacks in his favor that game so he could have potentially lost that then week two he lost off matchup um getting stalled by tdk week three um I think he had pretty good matchup with Medicham, but I don't remember exactly. And his week four match, I don't remember at all. But yeah, anything yeah. you want to say about this, Dennis? <laughs> no, I, I basically agree. Like, Io is like undefeated. He beat all of his opponents like pretty convincingly. Even like last week versus PTB, he played amazing. And even though Siduma is also coming off a week, uh, a win versus Sabella, uh, I want to say like, I don't know. I feel like. His run so far has been less impressive than Io. Like Io, like convinced me more. Like his play. Yeah, I so think I, you. I'm gonna give him, I'm gonna give the win to Io as I well. I think Io is unpredictable because he can play aggressive. He can play safe. Like he like pulled the turn one double versus PTB and stuff like that. But he can also mm -hmm. just bring stall and play it safe and get match up like that. So we had the next match. Uh, Corey twenty six hundred versus Brofist, and. I will give this uh, match probably to Brofist. So, um, Brofist is 2-2 two and two at the moment, Corey is 2-1. and one. Yep. And Brofist is um, coming off a win versus uh, Letna, who was undefeated before that. And Corey just lost to Black Oblivion, where he like he didn't bring a steel type, and he was pretty weak to Tapu Lele. Um, I know he, I know he's gonna be aware of the fact, and he he's not not gonna have a steel type every week. Like I know he can change it up, but basically why I'm giving this to Brofist is. Even though Brofist is 2-2 and Corey is 2-1, um, Brofist lost um, one game to Zomak, he could have won. Um, I think Zomak got a, uh, a static para that played a role in the game. I'm not saying he would have like automatically won, but definitely played a role. And also versus Black Oblivion, I want to say he lost off matchup um, where he brought stall and Black Oblivion had like... Black Oblivion didn't even necessarily prepare for stall, but he, he just had to have the matchup with like Metronome Mamoswine um, being a complete... Menace to uh, <laughs> Brofist team. Oh, also, Brofist changed his uh, forum name back from John to Brofist. And yeah, Corey, um, he had a week one win with um, Medicham, just uh, clicking high jump kick versus Trosco, and Trosco not really having an answer. Week two, he had a win versus uh, Gondra. But I want to say, like, I don't want to like uh, attack any two players, but I want to say um, Gondra could have played his landers a little bit better. Um, I remember uh, it was a like Continental Crush Landris and Cory had a semi stall type of build and he went for Continental Crush into Stone Edge and it was not able to pick off the Landris. And if he uh, SD'd again he would have potentially been able to get a kill and he would still have his Landris alive. But yeah this is like also like I don't know too much to say about this game but like my gut feeling and Brofist being more experienced I'm gonna give this to Brofist. Yeah like I agree because like as much as I won Corey to do well because like he's a friend like I don't know Brophy is kind of it's very hard to like go against Brophist even though like he's like two and two he has a worse record than Corey but like he's way more experienced. So. What do you think Brophist being two and two doesn't say anything? He, he should have yeah. been three and one in my opinion uh, definitely or could have been. Yeah so if I if I'm being like objective I'm giving the win to Brophist but I, I low-key hope Corey wins so yeah, yeah let's put I it mean, back. I like both players so I mean, I want both to win, but I'll give it to Brofist. Okay, next game uh, here versus X-Ray, RSOU. Um, I think that X-Ray is 3-1 and one at the moment, he is 1-2. Yeah. Is he 1-2 mm -hmm. and two or did he play a fourth game? No, no, no he's 1-2, yes. Uh, so, like, X-Ray has... He can one week, yeah. X-Ray has been doing pretty well, and, like, X-Ray's wins were pretty convincing. Like, he only had, like... He kind of got smashed one week, I think it was Z Nain if I recall correctly, but other than that, like he um, like he won with a high score most of the time. 
I think versus get this money, what like he demolish he demolish get this money, and mm -hmm. here uh, is one and two. He um he beat Jinji. He lost versus uh, what's it called? He lost versus Kanto, and he lost versus uh, get this money. So, yeah, like I don't know too much about this, but like I'm just gonna go X-ray. Like X-ray is. Like he X-ray has been yeah. on the grind. I like I know a little bit from behind the scenes. X-ray has been testing not only with Blunder, he has been testing in general. Like I think he also tested with BTB a bit in Auras. And he's also just really motivated to play the tier and yeah, I'm just gonna Oh, to I thought I thought you had some I thought you had some intel from like German servers or whatever. No no no, I don't have anything from German servers. Mm -hmm. I just know that he's really motivated and he's like been training in the mountain and oh, he yeah. has creative sets like that people like he couldn't show off everything yet, but I know like some of his teams have really creative sets. Like, I, I, also it, hmm? I also think X Ray is gonna win because like I don't know here I'm I'm definitely not underestimating here because like he's the Smoke Plus champion, but like in my opinion, even though I haven't been, I guess, uh, looking at the Auras games that that closely, I wanna say X Ray is like easily top four pl Auras player in SPL like alongside CBB and Intendi and. Kentor's Yeah. Oh, so, so, yeah. I'm gonna win. Like, one of the texts that x had, I think it was versus Jinji, was like Healing Wish Call Fable. Uh, he didn't get to show it, but that's like something that's really cool. If you can Healing Wish bring something back, like a sweeper or um, like a CM win condition that you have in the back. Okay, so the next um, <laughs> series is gonna be the, the Tigers versus the Tyrants. And the Tyrants, they bought a lot of new players in the midseason. They bought Blunder. And we'll have to I have to look up real quick and pause it who else they bought. He okay, said so the Tyrants bought, I think, Arfwarm and the Gumi, and they bought Blunder, right? So we have mm -hmm. um, P2 from the Tigers with Zamok from the Tyrants. Um, so yeah, the, the the record P2 is 1 and 2 at the moment, he got benched last week, which um, you can say was kind of undeserved. So in, in, which week was it? In week mm -hmm. um, 2, P2 um, lost to some hacks to Poik, uh, not some hacks, he got double crit actually. And there was the change lately on PS that... They found out that the crit chance in Sun and Moon is like four yeah. four percent now, and he got he roosted with a halucha, uh, as he got crit by Earthquake Pardon twice in a row. Um, some people say he could have played it a bit different, but I don't think you can say that because like the odds to get crit twice in a row, like the chances are so low that yeah. I, I think I agree with how P2 played that for the most part. And he lost one versus ABR where he had um, where he brought Stall and had bad matchup. I think someone told him to bring stall i don't think it was his own team and he said he's not going to bring other people's teams again and i think he was frustrated with that and zomok is two and two he played um he beat brofis with a little bit of hacks um and he, yeah and obliviate last week he beat obliviate um pretty convincingly he lost to um black oblivion in week one and he lost to empo i think mm -hmm. and yeah, what what do I think about this? I think P two um I like I'll give P two the advantage probably. P two um beat my man BTB in week one, where he yeah you can say he had better matchup but he also played well. Um he had like a healing wish. A healing wish Chanji to bring back Ben Zygarde and Ben Zygarde was able to overwhelm BTB. Yeah, like I honestly like some of these games I'm not hundred percent sure. Like this is like yeah of, like mm -hmm. yeah this one is super tough for me. Yeah, as this well, is like, like a gut prediction and like. Yeah. I want both people to win. I think they're like both in our chat, right? And like, yeah. Uh, like I would like say fifty-five percent for P two, but I don't know. And yeah, the yeah. next matchup is uh, Eternal Spirit versus Blunder. Let me pause. Oh, this, this one is. Whew. Okay, Eternal Spirit versus Blunder. Blunder um got bought mid season, and Eternal Spirit played. Are you at first for the Tigers? Um, he did super well. He beat um. I think he beat New Breed and Are You, and he beat someone else. Um, those games rec I recorded them. Um, whenever Ultra Balls has time, he will narrate yeah. them. Yeah, um, so far he played like Are You, Auras, and Sun and Moon OU. I, I think he played um, two Are You games and then two Sun and Moon OU games. And he's foreign, oh, oh, okay, never so mind. he's mm -hmm. unstoppable. Um, he beat Jinji and Sun and Moon OU, and I have to look up yes. real quick who else he beat. One sec. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, I so the other we... um, match that Eternal won was versus Trosco. So he's 4 and 0, 2 uh, 0 and are you and 2 and uh, Simon Oyo. And yeah, Blunder is obviously, um, we know he's fire, but huh. this is like tough. We, we don't know anything about, like, for me it's kind of hard because Blunder hasn't played in a 2 in a while. Yeah. Um, I will probably have to um, give it to Eternal Spirit. Um, like, yeah. oh my God. he used to be, like, Eternal Spirit used to um, play super aggressive um, and, like, risk, like, his win conditions. But, and, like, I even had people, like, talk bad about him. And, like, before the season started, no one really, like, was talking big about Eternal from what I remember, at least. But I always thought he wasn't bad. And now, like, um, pretty much everyone sees now that he's, um, he has improved a lot. But what was yeah 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 this matchup this match is actually one of my one of the highlights for me definitely but I don't know <laughs> this like Eternal Spirit might might just be like one of the worst like player to go up against for Blunder like as as his debut because like he's four and zero undefeated and, but it's Sunny Moon OU so I mean Blunder is definitely gonna be motivated to win this obviously yeah. especially I don't know if Blunder is gonna watch this but if Blunder is gonna match this, he's, watch this he's gonna be like oh I'm gonna smash it on you can't just <laughs> predict against me mm -hmm. <laughs> there's one player that can end I guess Eternal Spirit's streak that might be Blunder but it's it's so tough to say yeah I mean Blunder took a break from tours and I mean he would not have come back to SPL if he wasn't if he didn't want to play like I, he's probably gonna be super motivated um yeah like I would even say 50 50 but I'll give it I like I, I you guys can see I bolded Eternal's name already so like, I still just, I can't predict against Eternal's yeah. he has been like I watched yeah, all I his games and he like was dominating and oh yeah I, I so in the smock cast I heard Eternal Spirit like he gets like two or three teams to choose from right I don't know if someone builds for him but he gets to choose from and I think he doesn't even know what he brings before the game. Like, I've heard that <laughs> yeah. he, like, um, I think he flips a coin to what team he brings, or what was it again? So, and then he, like, yeah, just okay. goes in and he destroys the point that was to fire versus... I don't know. But, like, yeah. I don't know so if it was a coin flip or if it was, like, a different method. So, yeah, it's probably, like, 55, 45 to Eternal Spirit's, like, favor, in Eternal Spirit's favor. Hmm. Okay, next match, Oris Odin and Tenny versus Get This Money. Um, I'm just gonna keep this one really short and I'll give it to Nintendi. Because Nintendi, this, this guy is insane. Like, you never know what he's gonna do. Um, if you guys saw his game versus TDK that I uploaded, uh, like he stays <laughs> yeah. in on everything, but then there's other. Like, like this SPL. Um, like, he also covered and stuff with a Volcarona versus um, Axel. Where he um, and then Excel switched out and like he just lost right from there. The only game that Nintendi lost was versus CBB, and Nintendi did beat. Um, I think he beat Kanto as well, and Kanto is also yeah. three and one, so that's mm -hmm. impressing. And Gather's money is two and two. He did um, lose pretty badly to X-Ray. He did beat Mounts, who is on four at the moment, and he beat. Um, I forgot. <laughs> I get this money beat here, and he also he lost versus uh, versus Z9. So he's two and two. I mean, this one is like like I don't know much to say about this. It's just yeah, no. I, I think agree. that Nintendi is gonna win it because you don't know what he's gonna do. He can play super aggressive or he can play safe. Yeah, even though I really like, I really dislike the way Nintendi played versus TDK because like I don't, I don't really, I don't really like. Like people, they stay in every turn, but like you can say you cannot. I really think him, that like, I really, it obviously it obviously works. Yeah, like, and I really think say. that um, some of the pl aggressive plays that Nintendi made, he knew that his opponent would overplay. Yeah. Like he didn't just do that to like make to like make get him mad or anything. He knew that he would do that. Uh, but yeah, that was a wild game. So, yeah. um, the Nintendi TDK one. Okay, yeah. so the next series would be. Um, you guys can see here. There's like some trend. Um, my predictions. I don't know, uh, did you agree with every prediction so far with me? Uh, oh no, besides the Blunder one where we wasn't sure. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure, yeah, we, we pretty much have the same opinion. Yeah, but I have 3-0 yeah. for the thing, uh, for the bigs, and I have 3-0 for the Tigers, which sounds like one-sided pretty much. Uh, next series is um, the the Cryos versus, I forgot, which, which team is Black Oblivion on? 
Cryos vs. Classiest, okay, so Pokey Aim uh, played in DBP OU and he went 2-2 two two, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. And Black Oblivion, he um, beat Zomog week 1, he beat Cory week Cor 4, Corey. Yeah, he beat Corey Brofist and he lost versus Latna. So he's Black Oblivion is 3-1, and one. Black Oblivion um, doing super well, okay. And Aim is 2-2 two and two, but he played TPP. Um, so Aim, I think um, some people might like underestimate Aim. Aim. I've heard people say in my Discord chat. That Black Oven is gonna smash aim and uh, heavily disagree with that, and I think this is gonna be yeah. a really close game. I, I don't agree with that either. Yeah. Um, I would pretty much say that this is 50-50, and I kind of want to like bold the verses and not give it to anyone, but I'll have uh, like I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna decide. Ooh, but it's hard. Like, <laughs> I, I think I think aim is gonna win this. Um. The aim has um, building help from NJNP, and NJNP is, I think, good friends with Black Oblivion. So I would say aim has an advantage in, in that regard, in that sense. And also, like, like you could say aim does videos. Everyone knows how he plays. That's not necessarily true. Like, he's like, like aim can adapt to his opponent's playstyle pretty well. Um, I played him multiple times on that. Yeah, th yeah. This change is interesting because like. Like Pokemon obviously can play like pretty much any tier or gen if he has like good teams. So yeah, Aim is a valuable player. Yeah. He can. It's gonna be. It's definitely gonna be a closer game that people made it out to be. So. A lot of a lot of people thought that Aim would potentially um, play Ru. Um, I'm not 100 percent sure. Did they have? Did they put? Um, who did they put in DPP? Did they put Sweepage? In DPP, yeah, they put Sweepage. Yes. Okay, I didn't even know Sweepage plays DPP. Yeah, I don't know anything about these older gens. Okay, so um. You think Black Oblivion wins or aim? Oh, um, well, this is hard. Uh, it, I'm going with my gut, and I'm I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Black Oblivion wins this okay, one. Okay, so that's the I first one that we have different. Yeah. Okay, and then um, the next one is like obviously Black Oblivion is on fire, but I just think that uh, people are kind of underestimating aim, and aim has mm -hmm. um, not only. Like building help for NJMP, who's a big, uh, like he knows how Black Oblivion style and everything, and he can also give him like tips how Black Oblivion can yeah. plays. Okay, so CB versus Sabella is the next. I game. mean, this should be should be pretty obvious in theory, but I don't know. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, no offense, but like Sabella is in a pretty like rough. Sabella is owned spot, four, like, and yeah, I, it's I don't four. know if I mentioned it earlier, but Sabella has the problem um, that. A lot of his teammates are in a different time zone. They're from Europe and he's from America, right? So, mm -hmm. like, sometimes the, the chat is dead, the team chat is dead, and then can have definitely a bad influence. And CBB... And CBB yes, yeah, CBB. Um, I, do, I don't know how much Sun and Moon or Ultra Sun and Moon he, he's been playing, but, like, it's still, like, CBB. So. I'm surprised that they changed it. Um, CBB yeah. was 3 and 1 so far in Auras. With um, three dominating wins and only one loss to Kanto. Oh, yeah. With a rough I, I matchup. Realized, yeah, I don't understand either. Because, like, Poik, they put Poik in Auras. They put Poik in Auras, like, which I can understand. Three, yeah. um, it was probably that. I don't know if Poik doesn't like Sun and Moon OU. I've heard that Poik wasn't too motivated lately. And I think the change to um, putting Poik in Auras yeah. is definitely going to um, do good for. Uh, going to be good for Poik. I think he uh, has better chances of winning in Auras than Sun and Moon. And yeah, probably. C CB, if you guys watch Hida for Hida, like, he always outplays the opponents in their videos. It's so funny. Mm -hmm. um, Sabala made all T finals. And yeah, he had a pretty disappointing se uh, season so far. Uh, I think it's going to be a close game. Um. Like, a lot of people are thinking at this po point that Sabala is, like, done, but I would not say that at all. Um, I could even see Sabala winning it. Like, I would, like, say, I would say, like, 52% for CEB in this one. Uh, mm -hmm. So, like, I still give it to CEB, but I, like, I also like CEB a lot and his playstyle. Like, he can, like, he plays, like, aggressive, right? It's, like, fire. Yeah. Like, um, he doubled into High Dragon, I think, and then he fire blasted on, which one did he fire blast? Yeah, he fire blasted the incoming Feral Thorn. Yeah. When the opponent had our Starmie, when Nintendo had our Starmie. But yeah, like, Sabala is uh, Sunimun OU main and CB mains, uh, is, like, CB's main was Auras, but CB can also play Sunimun OU. You yeah, know, I'm definitely giving this one to CBB, like, no I'm giving doubt. it to CBB, but not as, but uh, I don't think it's like a 5 or 6. Mm -hmm. I think it's like mm -hmm. a 1 or 2 0. And definitely have, I have in the back of my mind that Sabala can uh, also win this, like, 
Like I really wanna just put this here and not predict anyone to win. Okay, so mm. next next match would be Poik vs Zinane. Yeah, I already talked about it a little bit about Poik. Yeah. So Poik uh, has had a rough season and I don't remember Zinane's score. I will pause it and look that up real quick. Zinane is like three and one I think. So Zinan, I remember one time he be he brought a subtile and people didn't understand why he brought that team. I think you know, a lot of people didn't like his team and he lost was Axel when he brought that. I remember mm -hmm. him beating um, Get This Money. But the other two games that he had, I don't remember, so I have to pause real quick and look it up. Oh, the other okay, the other two games that Zinan played, um, he smashed X-Ray and he smashed Ampo. So Zinan is 3-1 and one and Poik mm -hmm. um, did... Lose to BTB, where that actually um, wasn't such a big loss. Um, I will show you guys the replay real quick. Yeah, you guys can see here um, BTB versus Poik. Desire the Specs, and at one point BTB goes into oh yeah, Specs HP poison on the Budo turn one. But mm -hmm. basically, what I was uh, what I'm trying to talk about here is Desire is a huge threat to Specs Zaga to BTB. Um, it has obviously Sludge Wave of power. So that his Zygarde is in on Heatran and now he goes into Kartana. Um, I think he was scouting for Arntel from that would hit the top of Bulu. And yeah. like he didn't predict the Sludge Wave like there, he looks like a complete yeah. god. And later on, when the um Zygarde was in again. Which turn, which turn? Zygarde is in again. Versus Heatran and he goes for Core Enforcer. So like pre BDB played aggressive around the Zygarde and worked out, but like um, Poik could have. I th I th he went for a corn forcer there. What did he predict? Maybe the Zapdos. Um, yeah, he like, he just got some 50-50s wrong. Like this game um, could have gone in Poik's favor as well. Did Zygarde come out again? I don't remember. I think yeah, they, it comes out again. There was another like 50-50 at BTB one. So you can say BTB just got the coin flips correct in this one. So Zyga vs Heatran and he goes in the Bulu here on the off power. If he Sludge Waves there, that's also a big turn. Like if he like got the play correct with Zygarde on any of these turns, he would have gotten a kill and it could have been a different game. I think BTB just only just here, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he can just win at the end with, uh, I think Heatran just cleans it up. So there was one L that Poi had. Then he had a win versus um, P2 where he got a double crit, we already talked about that game. And what was this other game? Oh yeah, he lost versus ABR, I didn't upload that yet. Um, I don't remember if there was hacks. I can't say anything about that game. And what was his last game? Did he play all four weeks or was he benched once? Mm, they both played all four weeks. Yes. Oh, I remember now. So Poik also lost to Flame Vitini, which was a close game. Um, I think Poik could have definitely played this better. But he did come back with um, Greninja getting like 5 water shurikens on Kartana later in the game. Like here, um, I think he T-waved the Landris here, expecting a switch earlier on. With the Feral Thorn. Yeah, yeah, he T-waved on turn 5. And then he misses a leech seed, which sucks. But like, if he just leech seeded earlier, he would have had this health. He obviously put the switch into, I assume, Kartana, which is why he T-waved. So like, I get his play, but I think he could have... It didn't work out. What, what was I gonna say? Um, oh yeah, there was like one turn where Poik went for Tectonic Rage with his Heatran and Flamictini went into Gyarados, being immune to it. But he had a Flash Fire boost, so I think he should have just gone for Magma Storm. So that was like one play I disagreed with, um, but... Yeah, like basically Zine is in a much like better shape than Poik, so... I, 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 I'm gonna give the win to Zine. Zine um... Even, even though Poik is like... Very good at Auras because he won OLT and all... Poik won OLT, know. yes. Um, I think I... Like, this one is more of a gut decision, and I think Poik is gonna win it. Like, the problem is, I'll I show you guys now replays from... Oh yeah, he loses to Curse Body here, which also sucked. But at first, he got 5 water shooting hits and a crit to even get into Ash form. Like, I showed you guys Aura's um, Sun and Moon replays, not Aura's replays. But he is playing... Um... But yeah, Poik is obviously playing Aura's now, not Sun and Moon, so... It's tough to say, um... You say Zine and I say Poik here. Um, mm -hmm. Just um, based off poor, like. Oh, okay. This this one can go either way. Yeah, this one is tough. Um, I don't want to decide on this actually. <laughs> That's kind of dumb though. But yeah, okay. Then it says Zine and I say it can go either way. Like I'm not gonna say anything. Um. 
Like at first I wanted to give it to Pollock, but the more I think about it, Xenon is super fire, so I just can't decide. Um, yeah, um, if my man Ultra Balls has time, I can, like, I don't think he wants to do, like, a prediction video for lower tiers, potentially. Because we cannot, we don't see the entire ve week predictions, we only do a Sun, Moon, and Auras. <laughs> um, the next match would be, um, this is a new series, this is the Stark Sharks versus mm -hmm. the, Oh, this series is gonna be fun. I think it's the Scooters. So, BTB versus Flame Victini, um, obviously... I really wanna um want BTB to win this game, but this is like hard as fuck. Flaming Teeny is like super good. Like not only his prep is great, also he's a great player. He is um he beat Poek, he got a win versus Jinji where I think his opponent timed out and I don't that game was not decided yet. He got a win versus Psychic Mewtwo and he got a loss. He had a loss versus ABR where he got hexed for sure, so he could have definitely won that. And BTB has one loss, uh, has two losses to rough match up and slight misplaced, but in my opinion, he would have lost both those games anyway to match up. And he has two wins um, one versus Poik, where he, you can say he got the 50 50s correct, he played well. And he also, like, he also pulled a double into Heatran, anticipating the Mawal to come out on his Bulu, which is mm -hmm. one play I remember. And he also beat um, Sabala, where he just prepped really well. and Pretty much beat him in the team builder already, um, knowing that Sabala is not gonna have a breaker for the stall team that he's gonna pull up with. Um, yeah, this is tough. Flaming Teeny obviously has more experience. He played in World Cup. He like if when it comes to tour games, he played in last SPL. I don't know about the SPLs before SPLs before that, because I haven't been following um, Smogon for that long. I know he made OT before. Uh, yeah, that's. that's BTB is super motivated. Um, like he, we both know BTB, so we obviously want him to win. But I have to give this to Flame Victini. He's like a prep god, and he's a great player. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. Flame Victini, um, he could have been four and oh if the hex if ABR didn't get hex. I think that was his only loss, right? To ABR, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So yes. I, I have to give it to Flame Victini. I just. From this a, is definitely this is definitely the match. From like a viewer standpoint, from like a new, like as a guy that like factoring in Flaming Teeny's experience, his prep is so good. I have to give it to him. But as BTB's friend, obviously you want BTB to win. And yeah, I mean BTB. Um, I know he had a team prepared versus he had multiple teams prepared versus EO, and most of the teams would have done well versus EO. But the one team that he decided to bring. Um, which like we, we changed it around uh, like yeah I don't, I don't want to say we because I didn't yeah. really have I didn't really have a big influence but I was um, I was talking to BTB obviously but with mm -hmm. friends I mean there wasn't really me building other people were building but he could have definitely won versus EO like his two two record doesn't doesn't really show off like if he if he brought the other team versus EO like he had a really bad matchup versus EO if he brought the other team that um, he prepped with his friends or with us. Then yeah, I think this, he would have definitely, definitely smashed you off match. The match I'm looking forward like to the most. It's like the most hype matchup like, between yeah, uh, besides the Blunder Eternal game, yeah. BTB told me and like it's pretty obvious that he's gonna be very motivated. He really wants to beat Flaming Victini and like we yeah. all know Flaming Victini is super good, so uh, yeah, I remember BTB um giving Flaming Victini one of his RMTs and Flaming Victini like made mm -hmm. light changes and used it in the video and BTB was like super hyped back in the day in Auras. This was when BTB was not known at the tournament scene. Yeah, like BTB, he, um, but I met him in, I met him in uh, Auras on the ladder, and I don't know how it came, but we like kept talking, and so like, we were both kind of like, um, like he he changed his play styles. It's kind of BTB. I kind of want to compare it with EO, that mm -hmm. he used um, in back in Auras at the start. He played every playstyle, but he used more so also stall or semi stall. Not only he could play offense as well, and yeah, me and Tim were like back in the day sometimes playing like stall. Um, but now he can pretty much play everything, and I just love that. Like he has a variety. He can use hyper offense, uh, bookie offense, balance, and he can use stall. He can pretty much use everything. So in that sense, it's not gonna be easy for Flame Victini, but. Yeah, like, you already know Flaming Teeny is gonna be like, um, yeah, we play, 
Okay, I don't want to say that that, but like he might just play Sunday evening, uh, spend as much oh, time, yeah, yeah. Prep, oh, yeah, for spend sure, as much time, spend as much time prepping as possible, get the spotlight and all that. Oh, yeah, like. Yeah, I, I'm not picking in this one. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a just say I hope BDB. Yeah, I have BDB to pick for Mitini, wins. even though I, th I like I just like 53 percent that I want uh, BTB to win. And yeah, the next match would be Letna versus Lefties. Oh, Lefties, Lefties is debut in. Okay, Lefties got bought uh, by I think this is the Scooters, right? Yes. And Letna is on the Sharks. Letna is three and one. Uh, he. Did uh, did he beat Snow? I don't remember. Was that? Uh, no, there was Feeman. Oh yeah, I mixed them up. Whatever. Okay, so I pause yeah. it and look up the replay. So he lost versus Profess last week. He, yes. Um, I have to look up the other replays. <laughs> Letna beat uh, London beats Azok and he beat uh, Black Olivine and he lost versus Profess and Lefties is uh, just starting new. This SPL he hasn't played yet. Like mm -hmm. I said, he got bored. Um. Yeah, I honestly don't know too much about this game. Um, lefties, I just remember some of his snake games. I remember him winning with his FEF, I think with some luck. I think winning with his race Scarface as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Letna being 3-1, and one, so I would give a slight advantage to Letna. Um, I, I honestly can't pick in this one. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> actually gonna, I'm actually gonna give the, the advantage to, to Lefties, because I don't know, just pu purely because, because of the fact that Yes, this, despite of like Ledna's current record, I don't know. Like I haven't seen Ledna play much, whereas I've been, like I quote unquote know lefties more. So I, I won't yeah, pick I gonna just win can't pick on his on his debut. <laughs> okay, so we have um oh now this match yeah. is okay. <laughs> we have Nihilili, I think I don't know how to pronounce this name. Yeah, Nihi, I think, Nihilili, I think this okay. is a girl, and I don't know who it is, but it's like it's like the combination of Nihilego and the in-game character, I think. And Mounts. So Mounts is 0-4 at the moment, and I did not expect that at all because last year in World Cup he played Super Fire and he went like four and one or something. Mm. And Mount, yeah, but Mounts, you, I can say that um, like. It was not only matchup, like Mounts did have some games where he could have won, where he didn't play optimal. So that's tough, but I know Mounts is a great player. I just don't know anything about the opponent, so that's, yeah. like, you can't really give an opinion if you don't know the opponent. Yeah, I'm pretty sure no one knows the opponent outside of like the Sharks. Yeah, so the Sharks picked up Nihilili, I think for 3k if I'm not mistaken. Um, yes, yeah, so some people have made jokes that this is like blue, I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I will have to give this to Mounts because yeah yeah for sure like even though he's 0-4 he's it's not like he did well in World Cup and he is like definitely more known than like a, like a name that I've never seen before like I don't even know who this is I've heard that it's actually no I, I don't know if that's true I'm not gonna like say anything that I don't have confirmed <laughs> okay mm -hmm. so yeah I, that yeah like Mounts had some time now we had a we had mid season uh, he's gonna breathe. In and out, and he's gonna smash his opponent. That's all I'm saying. Okay, so <laughs> next series would be um, which team is ABR on again? ABR is on the Wolfpack. Wolfpack and Gondra is on the Raiders. Okay. Okay, ABR um, is coming off a win versus Poek, and he he beat um p2 pretty convincingly he had matchup also in that game but he played fire then he beat uh, he beat Effie with some luck and he did lose to um c dumas where he got hexed so abr is three and one and you can say he would have been three and one if there was no hex because i think versus c dumas he should have won where he got hexed and versus fv he could have potentially lost where he got where he got hexed in his favor so he, you can say he would have potentially even been four and oh because the hacks, I think that Sidumas got against ABR met up more than the hacks that ABR got against FV. But I don't want to mm -hmm. judge anything. Um, I, w I want to say three and one is a fair, fair score because he got hacked and he hacked one game, so it's kind of even. Yeah. And Gondra didn't play optimal versus Corey. Who else did he play? He smashed um, Obliviate, if I recall correctly. He, um, I don't remember his other two games. Oh yeah, he lost versus. Bro fist, but he doesn't necessarily play bad. So like Gondra is definitely a good player and his other game like he smashed his last two opponents. I just don't remember one of them. Let me mm -hmm. pause it. 
Let me pause and look that up. Yeah, okay, Gondor also played versus Azok, and I think he won that game as well. So, overall, um, I have to give this to ABR. <laughs> mm, <laughs> Mr. Yeah, Mr. Like, Mr. Prep, Mr. Prep God. Yeah, because like, much like Brofist, ABR is one of those players that you don't really want to like bet against, so... Not only that, but also Gondra... Like, Gondra, yes, he has shown that he can um, play well, and he can also, like... He can even dominate some of his opponents, but he hasn't shown that the entire season. And ABR is like one of the most consistent players. And mm -hmm. some people, some people say if ABR gets a, like ABR um, lives of having or like I don't know how you say that in English. I, I'm kind of missing the correct term here. But some people say he needs to have that good matchup that he has most of the time. Otherwise, he doesn't do well. And I don't necessarily mm -hmm. agree with that. Sometimes the matchup is even, and ABR still do, does well. Uh, that's, yeah. that's how I see it. And okay, so the next, yeah, like I have to give that to ABR. Like relatively, okay, next, yeah. relatively clear, like sixty percent, I think, for ABR. Next game is even. Next game is even clearer, in my opinion. Like what? How is this clear? No, the second, the second one. So, Trosco versus to... Tsunami. Yeah. It's not clear for me, but I'll I'll give you an opinion that you will probably not share. But okay, so Tsunami, aka okay, Shake It Up. Um, I think he quits his snake team, right? I don't know the details. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna say yeah. too much about it. And he came back, and I think CB is pretty mad that he came back, but I'm not gonna get into that. And he plays, I think he plays Ayu for his team, and he yes. lost to NJMP where he stalled. And I think NJMP or NJMP's teammates knew that he wasn't gonna stall, so NJMP had got a good matchup. And NJMP still almost lost to a freeze, I remember that game. Then Shake. I think he's 2-2, two two. I just don't remember all his games, but I recorded most of them. Oh yeah, he got 6 or by a Melon Editor, but he also mm -hmm. um, got 2 wins, I just don't remember them. Um, stay tuned for their games, they will come. They will go up on my channel sometime the next weeks. I record them live, Ultra Balls is gonna narrate them. And yeah, Trosco. Um, Trosco um, just beats... I don't remember if it was London Beats, but Trosco com is coming off a win. Um, he did lose versus Eternal Spirit pretty badly. He did lose. Uh, that was also ma bad matchup, though. He did mm -hmm. lose versus Corey. Well, it was also yes. matchup to Medicham, but he like had like at least some plays in between. But always like he had like some slight misplays always. Um, what was Trosco's last game? I don't remember. Um. So Corey. I don't remember either. Okay, Who I'll pause it and look it up real quick. Game? Who did it? Okay, so yeah, he he smashed Trosco smashed Oblivion. Oh, he like he beat him, and yeah, he did lose to Eternal Spirit. He did um, beat I think London beat, and he did lose to Corey. So he's two and two, if I'm not mistaken. And Tsunami, um, yeah, he's changing it up now. He's playing OU, and I will give an opinion that most some people will not share at all, but. Uh, I think Shake is gonna win this tsunami, mm, and yeah, it's interesting. And so, pretty much, I think this guy can pick up. Okay, you can say after like Shake is not at his best anymore. He hasn't been doing. Like now, I think it's two and two, right? I have to look it up again. I don't want to say anything wrong. Okay, so I just looked it up. He's two and two. He played one NU game and three IU games. I just think he can pick up pretty much any tier. He did not, you, most of you guys will not know, like, he, he uh, will know he has not played much Sun and Orient Tours. But he, um, he did, I don't know if it's called subbed in or however you want to say it, but he did play one game for for East and mm -hmm. World Cup Finals and he smashed his opponent. So, you guys can see here, uh, Shake, four old Metal Gross and World Cup Finals. Um, yeah, what are you thinking about this game, Mr. Dennis? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I I don't actually agree with you there, because, like, I don't know, to be fair, like, watching Trosco's, like, matches, he hasn't, like, I don't know, I, I think he hasn't been too, too solid, but, like, I still think he's he's currently, like, more solid than Shake, so I think Trosco is probably going to win, even though, like, many people say, and I agree, he's probably a better like builder than he's a player but yeah like Trosco uh, is not a bad player but I don't know no no no, no I'm not saying that no no no, no I didn't I didn't mean you said that yeah, but okay. I'm no I just I was just gonna say something is off about him this season because um I think last week he barely won 
when he had Halucha and Swamp World and like a team preview, like I remember one of my friends saying, Oh, okay, I'm not gonna watch this game. Like Halucha 6 0s, Swamp at 6 0s. So, like, it looked like he had a really good matchup, but then he barely won 1 and 0. So, like, that's just, like, I don't, like, um, uh, I just feel like there were some misplays made. Mm -hmm. And then versus, um, versus Cory. Yes, I think he would have lost anyways to Medicham. He didn't have anything for Medicham. So you can't, like, say he played bad necessarily because it was just bad matchup. But he had, like, some, like, misplays in between. I just don't know how to describe it. Yeah. And, like, some something just <laughs> makes me think that Tsunami's gonna win this. Like, oh. that's, like, more of a gut feeling as well. Um, okay, that's fair enough. And then we have a super... Oh, Kanto vs. TDK next. Oh, yeah, that's pretty fire. Yeah. Ooh. This is the last game that we're gonna do. Yeah. TDK is 2-2, two two, I think, and Kanto is 3-1. Kanto is 3-1, um, beating CBB, um, lost to oh, Nintendi, yeah, beat Mounts, and beat... Um, beat uh, here. Here. Mm -hmm. Where he also um, played better, in my opinion, than his opponent. TDK, um, I think I want to say he robbed Mounts. Um, I haven't uploaded that game yet, but that's also going to be coming. Recorded that yeah, live. He, yeah, he got kind of destroyed by Nintendo. TDK uh, lost to Nintendo where Nintendo played really aggressive and it worked. Yeah. And TDK did beat... I don't remember, I have to look it up. <laughs> okay, so TDK, I just looked it up. He has been playing both. He has been playing Simon Oyu and Oros Oyu. I forgot about that, kind of. Um... So he did lose to EO, but... Did he? Yeah, I think he did lose, mm -hmm. lose to EO, but there was a freeze. Um, I think his Among Us got frozen, which sucked. And versus uh, Sidumas, he won pretty much off matchup where he stalled his opponent. Now... I cannot... Like... I cannot say too much about TDK's Auras games, because one of his Auras games he won based off hacks, and one of his Auras games he lost based off his opponent just making really aggressive plays and working out for his opponent. <laughs> so that was just strange. Like, I don't think TDK necessarily played bad versus Nintendi. Um, I mean, he did have some bad plays, yes. But I just cannot categorize those two games. And I think Kanto has shown that he's solid as for sure. So I'll yeah. have to give Kanto a slight advantage here, even though I don't want to go against TDK. He's like... Really experienced and Kanto. Um, I, I think some people I like, kind of saw Kanto as a joke. Uh, for some reason, Kanto went for three K before. I think he went for three K in this season, right? So like Kanto, that's pretty Ooh. much that's that's mm -hmm. that's a steal as fuck. So the the, uh, the Wolfpack, right? They got him for three K. I think it's mm -hmm. Wolfpack, and that is yeah, the Wolfpack, and he's yeah. three and one and he's performing better and uh, pretty much. I think he's using most of the time. He's using teams that ABR builds, so it definitely has building help. I think ABR and TDK know each other pretty well, so there's going to be some... I mean, I might just be overthinking this, but to me it's always like a big mind game when two build... Like mm -hmm. when this when he has a builder that knows the opponent, like it's a big mind game because TDK also knows ABR's builds. It's a big mind game like what mm -hmm. expects... what If TDK expects him to bring ABR team again or not, but I'm probably just overthinking this. <laughs> Um, yeah, what do, you, what do you think? You think Kanto wins as well? Yeah, I'm thinking, I'm giving the edge to Kanto, yeah. Yeah, you I guys agree. can say, um, like some of these games, like I had just, I just had to kind of guess. But, yeah, somewhere we could also clearly figure out who we think will win. And yeah, we'll pretty much see, I think we agreed, besides, you, you said, you said Trosco was gonna win with Tsunami, right? Yeah, and then I like pick Black Oblivion over Pokemon, I think. Yeah, 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 and then it was... And then you met, and you say Blunder could also win with CS. And mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. that's pretty much it. Every other game we agreed. Yeah, I know like some of these are like like more gut feelings than we knew exactly this guy would win. But to me, it's just tough. Like a lot of these players are super solid, and I've only been yeah. following, I've only been following the Smogon for like 1.5 years, maybe two years. It's so, like before that, I have not been following SPL at all. So I like I don't have that much background information about these players, but yeah, I'm uh, really looking forward to these games. I'm gonna record most likely every single one of these games live if I can. Stay tuned for that. Um, 
Thanks to Dennis and hey, what, no else? Problem. what else? And that's pretty much it. Yeah, let me go, uh, let me think. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. And if you guys like this type of video, we will do it with uh, more friends next time. Like um, we'll do it with some uh, fun Americans. With I don't know if Colin wants to join, aka Avon. Also, um, congrats to Colin. He got picked up by the Bigs mid-season. Oh yeah, congrats um, to Colin. <laughs> <laughs> like, if Colin or Ultra Bolts would want to join or insult, I think the video would be, um, like, would get super funny. Um, yeah, like, let us know if you want us to do this with more people next time. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if I'm gonna do this every week um, because, like, recording all these games um, takes up a lot of my time. Like. Like sometimes um, I lose my like I lost my motivation to record. I'm like I gotta say I lost my motivation to record last week, but that was mid season thankfully, so that was fine. <laughs> and now we got that break in and we can go in week five and record as many games as possible again. Uh, yeah, like I don't know you guys might know or not know, I still have games from SPL week one for lower tiers that I sent to Ultra Balls. Uh, I didn't send him every single one that I have yet because the, the man is busy and I don't want to overwhelm him. I have, uh, from week three and week four, I still have some Sun and Oyu and some Auras Oyu games that are gonna go up in the next days. Um, but focus is, like mainly I'm gonna upload week five when week five games happen. But yeah, that's it. Thank you guys for watching and peace out. Whew.